All right then, gang. So now we're outputting all of this data, the list of books, to the screen inside this book list component. But what we want is the ability for a user to add a new book to the list, right? And then store it in the database using this whole idea of GraphQL. Now, if we remember to what the project looks like at the end, we have this form at the bottom and we have the book name, genre, which are both text fields. Then we have this author drop down as well. And this is populated with the different authors. So we can select from one of these different authors, right? Because that's much easier than the user putting in the book name, the genre, and the author ID. We don't expect the user to know the author ID. So we're giving them an option here. So we need a way to populate these authors inside this field right here, this, uh, this select box. And to do that, we're gonna to need to make another query to get the authors and attach it to this component right here. So how about we start by just making that component? So then I'm gonna cross off the app.js and uh, the book list. And in fact, I'll keep that open because we'll copy some of this in a minute, but I'm gonna create another component first of all, and that is gonna be called add book.js, all right? So now we have this other component. The first thing I'd like to do is go over here and import, or rather not import, copy this stuff from the book list component and paste it in here. So we still need all of these three inputs at the top. Now, this time we don't want to create a get books query. We want to create a get authors query so that we can retrieve those authors and then place them in this select box right here like this. So let's change this to get authors query instead. And then inside this uh, query, it's gonna be called authors, like so, because we want all the authors. And from each one, we still want the name of the author and the ID of the author as well, all right? So we have the query constructed there, all right? So the next thing we need to do is make the component itself. So again, I'm just gonna copy this stuff right here and paste it in because it's much easier to do it that way than rewrite it. So first of all, we need to change this to add book. And then we'll get rid of this display books stuff up here because we don't need to display books anymore. We're gonna display authors instead, but we'll add that on in a second. Then down here, we don't want this UL with um, a book list inside. Instead, what we'd like to do is output some kind of form. And in fact, we'll get rid of the div tags because we can just put the form tag in here straight away. Now, I've already prepared this form HTML because I'm sure you don't want me to sit here and write a whole form from scratch while you watch. This is basic HTML, but just to quickly walk you through it, we have a form tag with this ID of add book. We have a div and a div and a div. So three different divs right here. Each one has a class name of field. Remember in React, we can't say class equals field because class is a reserved keyword. We have to say class name equals field. So in each field, we have a label for the book name, genre, and author. Then in the first two fields, we have a text field for the book name and a text field for the genre. Then for the author, we have this select box right here. And currently, the only option is this top one, select author, right? So we want to dynamically output data here shortly. But for now, we also have this button with a plus sign on it as well to add the book to the database. All right. So let us take this book form then and paste it inside the return statement here. And yep, it still looks okay. So now we have that HTML. The next thing we want to do is bind this query to this component. So much like we did with the book list component down here, where we said GraphQL, then the query, then the component, we're gonna do the same thing down here. So at the very bottom, let us say export default, and then we need to say GraphQL, and then in brackets, the name of the query, which is get authors query. Then in brackets again, the name of the component, which is add book. All right. So we're binding this query now to this component. So before we start dynamically outputting any kind of data to this form, why don't we just nest this component inside the app.js file? This is the root component. So much like we nested the book list, let's nest now the add book component. So let's copy this onto a new line. And instead of book list, we want add book. And the same goes for the URL here. So not the URL, the string. So add book. 
And down here, we can output the add book components underneath. So we can say add book like so. All right, let's save this, cross our fingers and hope for the best. So over here, now we can see this form, all right? So cool, it's looking all right. We can add a book name, a genre, but right here, we don't have the options of the author. Now, we've made that request, we've done that, and we should at some point have access to the author data. It should be returned to us, right? So let us do a similar thing that we did here. We'll check for when the data is returned to us. If it hasn't returned, then we'll just uh, say something like loading authors. If it has returned, we'll populate this with the different authors, right? Okay, cool. So then back in the code, let's go to addbook.js. And what we'll do is create a function right here called display authors, because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're displaying authors in the component, right? So again, var data is equal to this dot props dot data. Remember, this data object is attached to this dot props when we bind a query to the component, right? And then eventually this data will have the data that we've queried right here. So the authors, so it'd be like this dot props dot data dot authors. We'll have that eventually. But first of all, we need to make sure that the data has finished loading. So again, we'll do a check if data dot loading. So if this is true, it means that the loading state is still true and we've not received the data back yet. So until we've received the data back, we just want to return like an option saying loading authors or something like that. So we'll say return and then in parentheses, we'll do an option tag because this is going to be embedded inside the select right here. So we need option tags here. So this option tag inside will have something like loading authors. All right, so let's close that option tag like so. Let's just put disabled on here to disable that uh, option. Anyway, now we've returned that if the data is still loading, if we've not received it yet. Else, if we do have access to the data, then we can start to output that data in the select box, right? So again, we're going to map through that data. So we'll say return data dot authors, because now we have access to the authors. They've been returned to us dot map then each iteration round, we have access to the individual item in that array. So I'll call each one an author, which will pass through to an ES6 function right here. And inside that function, each time around, we're going to return a bit of HTML. And it's going to be an option with that particular author inside. So we'll say option. And then inside the option, we're going to say author dot name, and then close off that option at the end. So forward slash option. Now, a couple of things we still need to do here. Um, I want to give each option a key value, much like we had to give each LI a key value in the last tutorial. You see here, React requires us to do that. We need to do the same thing over here in the options. So we'll say key is equal to author dot, and it's not in, um, it's not in quotations, it's in the curly braces. So author dot, ID. So that's a unique key for each option tag right here. We also want to set a value property of each option so that when a user selects a particular option on the form, then we know the value of that option, right? And that value is going to be the author ID as well. And we're going to use this author ID when they go to add a book to create that data in the back end, right? To associate that particular book with this author. I hope that makes sense. So this is going to be author ID as well, like so. All right then, so let us now call this display authors function, otherwise nothing is going to be output at all. And we need to do it underneath this option. So display authors, but we need to place it inside the curly braces and say this dot display authors, because it's attached to this component, right? So let's save that and head over now to the browser in the front end. All right, let's uh, let's hope for the best here. If I go to select author now, we can see all of these different authors. Now we have some random ones here, John and David, which I created a little while ago. Um, I didn't mean to leave those in, so I will delete those shortly, but we can also see Terry Pratchett, Brandon Sanderson, and Patrick Rothfuss. So we have all of that data now associated with this component. Awesome. So. How about we leave it there for now? 
and in the next tutorial we'll see how we can take this data that the user inputs into the form and then update our GraphQL server and update the database, add that data to the list, all right? So we'll take a look at that over the next few tutorials.